Are you struggling with your thumbnails not getting clicks and you're not getting the high CTR that you wanted? Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you guys how I make my YouTube thumbnails in Adobe Photoshop CC 2020. Since changing my thumbnail style, my videos have gotten a ton of more views. This video is a good example of that. As you can see, this video is my top five highest performing video on the channel. And this was just uploaded last week. Yeah, it hasn't even been a week yet. And I've been getting a 7.5% CTR on these videos, as opposed to the 4% on my average videos before I changed the thumbnail style. Today's shout out goes to Surprise It's Sun. Thank you so much for supporting me and staying active on the channel. It means a lot to me. Stay tuned till the end to see how you guys can get a shout out in my next video. We're going to be improving our thumbnails in Adobe Photoshop. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So if you don't already have it, you can download Photoshop by logging on to adobe.com slash products slash Photoshop. Link in the description. So now you can just open it up and you'll see you have this start screen. I'm going to click on new project and you can select HDTV and this will get you set with the right aspect ratio to make a YouTube thumbnail. If you don't see the HDTV preset, then all you have to do is put in 1080p by 1920 in the pixel section and that will get you started just fine. So now you can import a picture of yourself or not if you choose otherwise. But I have a picture of me posing, so I'll use that. I don't want all this behind me, so I'm going to remove the background by going to select and then select subject. And as you see, if you have a well lit scene and not too much behind you, it actually does a really good job. And maybe I have to make some slight adjustments and this feature saves you a lot of time from masking forever. And I don't like to mask if I don't have to. So now that we have the picture, we can move it over. So let's click on the picture and if you go to the top and click image, you'll get these three options. Auto tone, auto contrast, and auto color. I'm going to click auto tone and now watch the magic happen. Now my photo looks really professional. Now click on auto contrast. Wow, amazing. Auto color is a little iffy. Sometimes does the color right, but in this case it didn't. Let's select the rectangle tool and draw a box for the background. I'm going to change it to this dark navy color that I've been using for my new thumbnail style lately. I think I like that a lot and I'll keep it. It really highlights me and isn't too distracting. It's best to have a solid background or a contrasty picture so that your thumbnail stands out. Make sure you at least duplicate the picture, select the top one and select and then subject, then go to image adjustments and then exposure. Then turn down the exposure down to make the top layer pop. Make sure your top photo isn't too dark and your picture is clear. A blurry image won't work that well when you do the select subject feature. Now I'm going to add a photo of my click through rate and drop it right into Photoshop. We can tilt it slightly and make sure it's where we want it and there we go. Now let's go down here to the rectangle tool and when you hold it down it will give you more options. We're going to choose the rounded rectangle tool so click on that one. Now we can drag a box for the text and then make some adjustments. I'm going back to change its color to black so go up here to the properties and make sure the object is selected. Then click on the color block and change it to black. Perfect. Now duplicate this and put it below the first box. For this one I'm going to change it to white. You don't have to duplicate the box, I'm only doing it because I have a lot of text and I need two lines. Now we can add our text. I'm using the font Stoles. You can get it by going to Adobe Fonts and activating the font family on their website. Link in the description. Then just go back to Photoshop and search for it. If it doesn't come up, you may need to close Photoshop and reopen it when you're on Wi-Fi for it to appear in your font library. I'm going to type my text here and then reposition it where I want. Repeat that step for the second line of text. There we go. Make sure that you choose your words carefully because your text on your thumbnail can be what people click on, 
not always the title. People always see the thumbnail first and then read the title. But if you have a sloppy thumbnail, then people will breeze right past it. When your thumbnail is shown, this is called an impression. When someone clicks on your video, this is called a click-through rate. So if you go into your YouTube studio, you see on a specific video that you choose, you get these two metrics called impressions and click-through rate. Your impressions will always be higher than your click-through rate because the viewers are always interested in the video, but they may have seen it as an impression, but never clicked through it to watch it. All right, now you have a great looking thumbnail. Now this looks very professional and you are ready to upload it to YouTube. Awesome job, guys. If you don't have a picture of yourself, then make sure that there is a picture of something relating to the subject of your video or add some expression or an emoji to reflect the emotion of your video. Now you can export your picture by going to File, Export, then Export As, and you'll get this pop-up window where you can make a few tweaks before you export it. I'm going to change this resolution value right here to make sure that it is below 2 megabytes. If it's over 2 megabytes, then YouTube won't accept the thumbnail because it's too large of a file. Then save it and you'll get another window where you can save where you want the file. And then you can import the thumbnail into your YouTube video. And there you have it, an awesome thumbnail that gets CTR. If you want a shout out on the channel, you have to comment on either my videos, live streams, or premieres at least three times. Then I'll know that you're active on the channel and thus far getting a shout out. The question of the day is, what video would you guys like to see next on the channel? Let me know in the comments below.